Hello everyone, welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. I am Ruth Norton with Ruth Stamping Corner, and I'm so excited that you're joining me today. Today I have this beautiful little spring box that we're going to make. Um, there's a fun tree inside. I'm going to show you what's inside. Um, but it is so, it's so pretty. It's so um, springy, springy, I think. And the, the ribbon, we're doing some special stuff with the ribbon. So make sure that you tune into the video to see all about this box that we're going to make in just a minute. Um, before we get to the box, though, let's go over all of the Stampin' Up! World stuff. Paper Pumpkin for April is now open for subscriptions. The March Paper Pumpkins, um, I know mine has been built. It has not shipped yet. Mine has been built, though, so I'm excited to get that March Paper Pumpkin. And when I do, I will go live in my VIP group. But until then, our April Paper Pumpkin subscription is open. This is the All the Little Things Paper Pumpkin Kit. This has nine cards, three each of three designs, um, nine envelopes, iridescent foil die cuts, a shaded spruce ink spot, and then a photopolymer stamp set, as always. Also included in the April kit, you can see here, they are including, they're calling it like a box organizer. Um, and the only way to get this is to be a Paper Pumpkin subscriber. They are not... I'm selling this as an optional add-on. This is only going to be included in the box. And from what I understand, so you can use one of your old paper pumpkin boxes and kind of use that little box organizer to store your ink spots. Um, I understand that it is kind of modular, so you can store other stuff too, just kind of rearrange how you want the little compartments. So I think that that's really fun. It's a really cute little add-on for something that maybe we all have a little bit of trouble storing. I know those ink spots kind of pile up and we don't know what to do with them. So I think this is a really cute idea. It looks like you can stack them like too deep too. So if you have a lot of ink spots, I think this is a great kit for you. Um, remember that box organizer is only going to be included in the April Paper Pumpkin Kits. It will not be sold separately. So if you want that, you got to subscribe. That's the only way to get it. Um, okay, our online exclusives, if you haven't checked them out, they are online. <laughs> they are in my online store. You can shop for them. Um, I featured the Rhino Ready Bundle in last week's, or on my Sunday celebration Facebook Live. That was a really fun card, and I've heard a lot of good responses from you from that one. So make sure to check out those online exclusives. They're pretty good. Uh, we are getting ready for a color refresh. Stampin' Up! has announced that in our new catalog coming in May, there will be a fresh new color selection. Um, a color refresh means that they are going to retire more than just our regular in colors that retire. They'll retire more colors. They'll kind of switch up some colors. They may bring back some old in colors. They'll bring back some brand new colors we've never seen. So basically what this means now is for you to go through your inventory of colors. That means cardstocks, ink pads, ink refills, markers, all of those. Make sure that you have everything that you need um, because if one of those colors does retire the colors generally go fast especially like the cardstock and the embellishments I think those will sell out really quick so if there's a color that you particularly love and don't want to be without make sure that you are shopping them now some of the ink pads are already in low inventory so uh, once they sell out Stampin' Up! will not be restocking them so shop early to make sure that you get the colors that you want it is my 20th anniversary with Stampin' Up! I signed up in March, and so we are celebrating 20 years of me being a demonstrator, and I'm giving away some really fun gifts with this. So I'm giving away a $50 shopping spree for every chart that I fill up. With every $50 you spend, you're going to get your name in a box. Once the chart is full, I will pull a name from the box, from the number. Oh, I'll pull a number, a random number, and um, whoever has that number will win a $50 shopping spree. So However many of these I fill out during the month of April or during the month of March, I will be giving away those $50 shopping sprees. So head to my online store, shop using this host code to be entered. Orders over 50 get entered. Um, all orders receive a PDF with three exclusive projects. If your order's over $50 more, you're going to get your entry on that chart and you will also receive the make and take kit that coordinates with that PDF. Um, if your order's over $150, do not use the host code because you're going to receive Stampin' Rewards for that. Okay, I think we're ready to go. If you're watching this on Facebook, please share this with your crafty friends or anyone you think might enjoy this. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out. All right, so we're going to make this really fun little box today. Um, it's, it's a little box. It's not too, too big. And let me show you what's inside. So the box opens from the top like this. And inside, I have a little chocolate Easter bunny. And this is from C's. We have a local C's candy in our one of our malls around here and I just love this is the mini dark chocolate bunny 
I just love Zeus. It is my favorite, favorite chocolate. So um, I love going there and checking out what they have. And I saw these little bunnies and I was like, well, I can make a cute little Easter box for those. So that's what we're doing. Now, this does not necessarily say Happy Easter. If you have a Happy Easter greeting, you can absolutely add that on. Um, but I think it's just a fun little spring treat. Now, other things that you can fit in here, um, you can definitely fit like two Kit Kats in here, too many Kit Kats. Those will fit in here. Um, check your local, you know, spring candy section, Easter candy section, section. They may have little bunnies that are of similar size or other little chocolates that are of similar size that you can fit in here. So if you don't have a season near you, don't worry. You can, there's other treats that you can put in it. We're using some Pacific Point cardstock. That is a cardstock color. I don't hardly ever pull out. So, um, we're going to use that color because uh, our little bunny, I went with that color because he's got some like Pacific Point shoes on, his little jacket. So that's why we're using Pacific Point because the bunny has that color on. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start with our scoring. You're going to need a piece that is um, five and a half by six. So almost a square. Just make notes of which side is which because it's not a full square. So on the six inch side, let's do some scoring at half at one and a quarter and at five and a quarter. Okay, and then we're gonna turn it to the five and a half inch side and we are going to score it at, let me look at my notes, at half, at, at one and a quarter. Yeah, okay, sorry, I had to, I lost my train of thought there. I thought I had done it wrong at three and at three and three quarters. So that's half, one and a quarter, three and three and three quarters for the five and a half inch side. All the measurements are in the video description and they will be on my blog following this video. So don't worry about writing anything down. It's all there. Okay, let's let's get this guy together. Now, let's let me get all these burnished. If you want to burnish on all those score lines, the um the more you burnish on those score lines, um, you'll just have a better looking box. It'll all go together much easier. All right, now. On the five and a half inch side, you have these bigger sections here. This is, the, our box is going to fold up this way. So one side on this side is the top and the bottom. The side with the two score lines is going to be the top because that's the little flap that's going to fold in. Um, the bottom is just the one with the one score line. So let's start with the bottom. And I'm actually going to flip it this way. So my half inch score line is going to be on my right. And on the bottom, where there's only the one score line on the bottom, we are just going to cut out this little half inch piece down here, this little half inch rectangle. And then we're going to cut up the straight rectangles and then just notch, notch in a little bit on those little square tabs, okay? So go up straight on the rectangle and then notch in, notch in and up straight. There we go. All right, so that is the bottom all done. So we're gonna flip it over to the top now this is going to wrap around here. I want this seam to be in the back and I want my box to open in the back. So this center, this center tab right here, this is going to be our tab that folds in. So let's go ahead and start there. So on this longer rectangle here, I'm going to cut straight down that score line. I'm going to do that on both sides. And this is the piece that, that we're going to keep. This is going to be our like lid. So on this side, we're going to cut out these two rectangles on the side. These little half inch rectangles. We definitely don't need these. And then we're going to trim this off. This is going to be a tab that goes into our box. And then we're just going to trim these at an angle. Okay. All right. We're going to kind of do the same thing on this side. We're going to kind of cut out this little tab here so that we have a tab that folds into our box. This long rectangle piece, we don't need at all. So let's just get rid of that piece. And we're going to cut this little tab and just trim these tabs down just like that okay so this is this is your box all trimmed up right now i do want to round the corners of this piece so grab a corner rounder we don't currently sell a cor corner rounder so whatever you have to round your corners use that all right so that is that is our box all trimmed up all ready to go all right, so let's adhere this down. I'm gonna use some Stamp and Seal Plus. I'm gonna put some on that half inch tab. And we are going to 
close this up. You know, I'm going to lay this flat. I'm going to fold on that score line there. And then I'm just going to fold that over. And that'll line it up. I don't know why I was making that so much harder than it needed to be. All right, so this is going to be the front of our box. This is the one we're going to put in last. So go ahead and fold those little tabs in. Fold in that back side. And then a little bit of adhesive on the front. And that closes up your box. So that is your box. Just that easy. It's a simple little box. It's super cute. You could definitely use this for so many things. I think one of, like, maybe the Reese's eggs might fit. That might be the right size. But until then, I have another little C's bunny. So we're going to stick him in there. He's the perfect size. And we're going to close up our box. Okay, let's start the decorating. So I have a piece of the Design a Daydream DSP. This is DSP that is in our annual catalog. This is actually our host DSP. Um, so it's like it's a mega stack of DSP. It is such good patterns. They're nice basic patterns. Um, but that one's beautiful. Um, I actually don't have a lot of this left. I've used so much of it over the last year. So, um, but it's a good one. This one will probably retire. They very rarely carry over DSP, especially host DSP. So if you love it, um, the only way to earn it is um, with Stampin' Rewards. And your order needs to be above 150 before you get Stampin' Rewards. Um, so my piece of DSP is 3 by 6 And I'm going to put some adhesive on both of those long ends. And then just kind of down the middle, just hold it in place. And we're going to wrap this around and I'm going to start on the back and I'm just going to try to make sure that it's somewhat straight and we're just going to wrap this around and adhere it down. This doesn't need to be removed to open the box because the box opens on the top and the bottom so we can just adhere this thing down and not have to worry about that. All right, just like that. So isn't that fun? These colors are fun, huh? This is like Blackberry Bliss with the Pacific Point. Very fun. All right, I have another piece of that DSP that I have punched using the label me, I think it's fancy. Maybe it's label me lovely. <laughs> we have two punches that are called label me something. One is label me fancy. One is label me lovely. I kind of want to say this is the label me lovely one. Um, so I've punched that out of the, the same package of DSP and we're going to put this on our card or on our box. But before we do that, let's do some ribbon. And let me get some scratch paper here. So I have taken my white seam binding and I've already done most of this. I have colored it with my Stampin' Blends. This is my Blackberry Bliss Light Stampin' Blends. And I'm just going to do the, the rest of this real quick. And the white seam binding is perfect for coloring with our Stampin' Blends because it's nice and light. The color just kind of soaks through both sides. You don't have to go do both sides. It is fantastic. Now we're going to step this up just a tiny bit more with our Blackberry Bliss ink pad. And I am using the Petal Park bundle here. So I'm going to pull out the punch in just a minute, but this is the stamp set. Um, and I'm going to use this flower image. This is like the line flower image. And we're going to go through and we're going to stamp on that ribbon. So it's going to give some added fun texture. It's going to bring in those, the florals from the from the front of the box onto the ribbon. So it's just going to add a little bit of extra. Okay. Let me see if I can get this ribbon to lay flat so I can stamp it. But this is just a really great way to really customize your ribbon. I'm going to put that punch down. Um, it's really, it's a really, really fun way to, to really get the most out of your ribbon too. Cause now we have not only Blackberry Bliss ribbon, but we have like textured ribbon too, which is, even more fun I think and this doesn't take too long and you will have to kind of let it dry for a couple minutes it soaks into the ribbon pretty quickly so it dries pretty quickly but um give it a few minutes just to dry all right so while we're waiting for that to dry I'm going to leave this out we're going to set this aside but isn't doesn't that look cool isn't that stamped ribbon so much fun okay I'm going to set this aside to dry and while we're waiting for that to dry let's stamp all of our little flowers so I'm going to grab out my stamp and pierce mat, which I probably should have used for my ribbon, but I didn't. Um, we're going to stamp the flowers um, once in Blackberry Bliss and once in Pacific Point. So I'm going to take that line or that solid image of those flowers from the Petal Park bundle. I'm going to stamp it on my scratch paper first, and then I'm going to bring it in and stamp it on my on my basic white piece. And so that's going to give me a lighter shade of that Blackberry Bliss. And then we'll come in with that line image again, and this one will line up 
right on top of our other flowers. Isn't that cute? So you get all that detail. All right, now I do need to clean. I need to clean these before we move on to Pacific Point. So hold on. Grab your, your Simply Chamois. These are great to, to clean your stamps. This is what I use to clean my stamps. Um, they don't look pretty. They come purple and clean, but then after you use them over and over again, they kind of get stained. Um, I just rinse mine out in the sink um, when I need to wash them, and then sometimes I'll even throw them in with my um, towels or sheets and just wash them out that way too. And um, it doesn't damage your towels or sheets. I've been doing it for, for a very long time. It doesn't damage anything, and it keeps them lasting a long time. Okay, I need that. I'm going to move my scratch paper and we're going to stamp it again in Pacific Point. So I stamp that Pacific Point off and then we're going to go over it again. It's so hard to line these up with the camera. Okay, hold your breath. Let's see. Oh, perfect. Isn't that fun? So cute. Okay, a couple more things we need to stamp. I've already done some of the leaves. Let me move these inks out of the way before I stick my hand in something. I've already, we need five leaves total, so, and I've already done four of the leaves. So let's do one more leaf, and let's see, I don't have any more paper for that. So let's go ahead and just stamp it on the bottom down here. This is Granny Apple Green, with scratch paper. I'm going to stamp that solid part off, and then stamp the detail directly over it. Okay, so there's your, your little stamped images, and I've already stamped my greeting in Pacific Point, and we have that ready to go. My greeting is from the Warm Welcome stamp set. This is also in the mini catalog. I love these fonts, and I love those just kind of basic greetings. I really love this one. Um, the Petal Park Bundle does not have any greetings, so you're going to have to pull greetings from somewhere else. So I chose the Warm Welcome stamp set. All right, let's get everything punched out. So this is the punch for the Petal Park Bundle. So it's going to punch the, the flowers all at once. So one punch for all three of those flowers. Okay, move that out of the way. Here's our Blackberry Bliss flowers. And one punch for our Pacific Point flowers. And they all line up just perfectly inside that punch. Isn't that fun? Everybody loves a punch bundle. Our punch bundles are very popular. Everybody loves punches. They're so easy to use. So why wouldn't you love it? All right, we're just going to line up our little leaf down here. This will give us five leaves total. There's our little leaf ready to go. All right, let's move all of our scraps out of the way, move our punch out of the way, and we are ready to assemble this. So I'm going to take that little label, and I'm actually going to assemble it right on the label, and then we'll stick the whole thing on. So let's start with our, our larger flowers. These are going to go on. I'm just using liquid glue. You can pop these up if you wanted. Um, these are just going to go right onto our little label. You can also use glue dots. The liquid glue I, I love because it gives you just a little bit of wiggle room to slide them around. All right, I'm going to take a Blackberry Bliss flower and just kind of tuck it this way. Okay, and another little Blackberry Bliss flower. This one's going to get tucked under here like that. And let's stick on our greeting. A little bit of glue on the back of that. This is just going to go like this. Isn't that fun? So pretty already, right? The colors are so fun. Okay, we're gonna add those directly to our card, but let's add some of our some of our leaves. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to the bottom of the leaves and just kind of stick them on. So one back here, a little bit back here, behind our blackberry bliss flower. When I'm stuck, when I stuck my glue on to my flowers, I only put the glue in the middle so that I could lift up the petals and stick these in. So that one's gonna get stuck in. Just like that. Then we're going to stick two down here under the Pacific Point ones. So we'll flip that over. Stick one here and one more down here. Just like that. So that is our little label. Isn't that cute? Now you could stick this to a card too. That would be gorgeous on a card. All right. Let's get our ribbon tied up. And then we'll get this whole thing up put together. So we have our ribbon that is stamped. Hopefully it's dry enough by now. I'm just going to tie a bow on the side of the box here. 
I want to make this like a big loopy bow. The good thing about putting, um, coloring the ribbon with Stampin' Blends is that it kind of makes the seam binding, it gives it some more strength to it. It makes it a little bit stiffer, which makes it just really nice. The seam binding is my absolute favorite. If they get rid of this, I will be so sad. It is my favorite, favorite ribbon. Just trim off the ends. You have a nice little bow right off to the side there. Isn't that pretty? All right, we're almost done, guys. You just need to stick this on with some dimensionals. I'm going to put it right on the ribbon because I want to hold that ribbon in place. I don't want that to move around. This is going to go right on just like that. And then we're going to pop up our two little flowers that are left. So one dimensional on the back of these. You can use a mini one for this smaller one. That'll work too. And this one will go down here, just kind of this way. Kind of we're making like a diagonal cascade of these flowers. And that, that's it. That's our box. It's really cute. That punch makes it really easy. You could make a bunch of these if you wanted. I think that this is just a really sweet little project. All right, guys, that is it for me. I will be live on Sunday again in my VIP group for another amazing card celebrating my 20th anniversary. Um, do you guys want a quick sneak peek of that card? Let me show you guys what we're making on, on Sunday. Look at that. Now, I will tell you guys, I you know what, I said I'll be live, but I actually might not be live. That, that video might um, be posting because we are actually leaving town on Sunday morning. Um, so keep notice in my um, VIP group and that video will either go, go up sometime Sunday morning or I will try to be live early. So um, as soon as we get our times figured out, I will make sure to post, but just watch that video might not be live. But I will still have an amazing card for you. I promise. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you guys later. Bye.